Hello everyone and welcome to part two of this week's Factorio Space Exploration and Crastorio Up 2 update on Lawrence Blaze. And so we've, I've been out on uh, Talos being very, very busy. So let's have, let's have a bit of a look at what I've been doing. The main thing I've been working on down here, or over here, is getting the beryllium processing up and running a bit more quickly and effectively. Because previously it was running at about 15, it was producing about 15 ingots per minute, and that wasn't remotely enough. So as you'll remember from the number of times I've talked about this beforehand, the reason we're having the problems is because when I first came out here, it was long enough ago that we didn't have beacons available, and so I built this up with, well... It was rather slow. We were we were taking in um, we were taking in in, in the, uh, the the core chunks as, as they came in and, and crushing them, but it wasn't it wasn't producing producing anything like fast enough because all these machines were full of uh, productivity modules or at least fairly full of them, and so everything was really really slow. I also didn't quite have enough productivity modules for everything, so I've gone in and improved that a bit. Over here, I was, I was targeting the speed of getting this one solid blue belt here. And as you can see, we've managed that. That This, this blue belt is, is running, basically, I think it's running completely 100% of the time. We're, we're it's running along here. And we've got sl ever so slightly more machines than we need. But I think that's the way you, want, you usually want to go with this sort of thing. We're then unloading over here, and this conveniently is exactly a blue belt coming out of the other side as well. And that's, that, that is quite interesting, but if we look at these machines, if we look in here, you can see that um, these take in, for, the, for these to run, they need to take in 20 core fragments, and then they'll output 16 barrels. So that would suggest that um, if they're all running at full speed, taking in, taking in all that, that you'd, you'd only have 16 twentieths of, uh, of the stuff coming out, so or uh, also known as 4 fifths, 80%. However, we've got the productivity modules in them, and if you look over there on the right, we're running at 24% productivity, and that's really, really close to the magic 25% productivity that would take 16 a second, 16 per run, up back up to 20. So we, we've essentially got 20 coming in here, and then we've got 16 plus 24%, so which is practically 20, coming out on the other side. So convenient we've got we've got a solid belt going coming in and a solid belt coming out and that's really quite pleasing it sort of makes me not want to um we've also got an insert it's the wrong way around that's a bit weird uh, so it sort of makes me not want to um put in any additional um productivity into these machines just because it's so not so well balanced but i think i, I probably will in any way once we get better productivity modules just because that'll mean that we'll, we'll have slightly less flowing in here and that'll mean we don't need to pull in quite so much to these stations so, yes, I've extended the beacon thing all the way through. Beacons here, beacons here, beacons here. All of these machines are covered by beacons, with the exception of the uh, um, the craft casting machines down here, which can't take can't take productivity modules. So we've just put speed modules directly into those ones. And this means we're now... This is, this is then, overall, this has increased the speed of the whole system by about three times over, which is quite impressive. So part of that is using a faster belt here. That gets an extra 50% because we've gone from red in a red belt input to a blue belt input. But then also the, um, the productivity modules and the fact that this is running constantly has now meant about a, about a, rough, roughly a tripling of the amount, amount we're producing. Uh, so that was then take, took us from about 15 to about 45 per minute, which is not bad, but I wasn't really satisfied with that. And I brought, I brought out some parts to do some extra building as well. So the next thing I did was put in this assembly down here, which you'll recognise. So basically, from from basically this this area here, which you'll recognise hopefully as being essentially the same as this part here. This takes in the straight up a beryllium ore, uh, without the, which is what comes out of the pulverisers, and turns that into beryllium ingots. And it's the same. It's exactly the same size as this. It's been offset a little bit over to the left here because of the positioning of the belts and the fact that this warehouse is in the way, uh, which is kind of untidy, but. I'm okay with that. It, it, it fits and it works. And that is being fed by by, um, by these trains over here that are going off to get beryllium ore and then just unloading it straight onto the onto, onto the belts over here. It goes through exactly the same processing system. And so that then is producing the same amount of this again. So it's another doubling. So we've tripled it and then doubled it. So in theory, that should mean we're getting about six times as much coming through. We've gone from bringing in... Uh, so in theory, we should have gone from about 15 to about 90 per minute. So let's have a look at the production graph in here. We'll have a look at the uh, beryll, beryll, beryllium ingots. That's that's uh, these these things here. So you can see here, looking at the uh, beryllium ingot production over the last 10 hours, you can see we went from about 6.5 per minute back here, which is uh, rather pathetic. Uh, then I think some, somebody, it was either Tristan or Mark, I forget which, went in and they put in some extra machines and possibly some extra modules. And that boosted it up to this sort of 14-ish per minute along here. So somewhere between 12 and 15 per minute along here. <clears throat> then I came along, I broke the whole thing completely and I boosted it. This, this is where I put in the first boost. So that's taken us up to the four, about 46, 45, 40, 
46 per minute here. That was the original original boost of um, of getting of, get, of, uh, of of implementing this system here. Then, then I, it got broken again. I think oh yes, we one of a couple of the trains got eaten, which was a little by biters, which was a little bit unfortunate. Uh, so it dropped all the way back down to five, and that's that that was presumably just running off this core miner here. Then I fixed the train, so it jumped back up to about 45, and now, if we zoom in a bit more, you can see we've got a steady state of about 80, which isn't quite the 90 I was expecting. I don't know whether that's because there's some stuff that's sort of filtering through gradually. Uh, one of the problems is that we seem to have an excess of sand sometimes, but uh, no, I seem to fix that for the time being. Um, we've not quite got up to the 90 I was expecting, but we're at 80 per minute, so that, that's pretty good. That's now being fed down here, and it's it's okay. The first gun is satisfied. That's good. We've now moved on to the second gun. Um, so we've sent all of the stuff that's being sent to this particular Norbit chest, and I imagine that's probably the one that's producing the. Which I don't know why that one's happy because there doesn't seem to be any in there being unloaded. I'm not quite sure exactly how what's going on over here, but in theory, this is now means we're now shipping the uh, the beryllium out to over to Norbit in, in, into all the places where it's needed. Um, we will wait to see in the next in the next stream whether it is actually sufficient and whether we're just filling up buffers now. Um, I don't know. We'll need we'll need to look into it a bit more. I, I am thinking I do have enough parts to build another one of these down here. Um, in order to bring in even more um, beryllium ore, and then and therefore when we'll be able to get this run all running even faster, uh, we'll see whether that's we'll see whether that's um, necessary next time, if, or I might just put it in for future proofing. So that's that was the um, the, that was the main expansion, the main core of the expansion. If you'll pardon the the accidental pun, because we're doing it from core mining. Um, this and this and of course down here, I, mean, I need to put in a few extra belts to bring the cryonite in, some pipes to do the um, to, to bring in the acid and the and the and the uh, and, and the pyroflux for everything. Um, I didn't. Ha I was running a little bit low on steel pipes, so we've got this slightly colourful, stripy effect going on here with the steel undergrounds and the iron pipes. But never mind. We'll uh, we'll gloss over that. I also sorted out the uh, the coal production over here. So we've, we've got some mines running, but we had too much coal being produced by the uh, by the core fragment processing, and this this is jammed up a little bit. Now it appears that we have okay. We have to, we now have too much. Uh, we have still have too much sand or too much and too much stone. So this is something that I'm aware of and know that I need to sort out because we have now have a lot of sand coming down from the beryllium processing, and a lot of stone coming through from the core processing and from the beryllium as well actually. So we need to we need to get rid of a lot more a lot more sand a lot more glass. But that's something I shall deal with next time. This is a known issue. The coal is now, however, sorted, basically because I've now got the belt bringing it over, dumping it into, the, into this chest, only loading from the mining area if there's a serious shortage of it, um, which is probably never going to happen because we've stopped using the coal for the old-fashioned um, beryllium processing method because we now have an unlimited supply of vulcanite uh, to make the pyroflux, so we've been able to move over to that recipe. So these mines will probably never really be used again, uh, and some of them are empty anyway. So this this is probably all going to be absolutely fine. The only thing we're really using excess coal for now is producing these filters, producing the filters for the air purification. And we do need quite a lot of those because I did some extra expansion as well. So if you we look out over here, um, let's turn that off for a moment. Um, you can see that before we we did have these two outposts over here. These these are core mining outposts, and the trains are bimbling out over there merrily to go and get the the core fragments, bring them back in to be processed up here. Might need more trains. We'll, we'll have a look at that. But also, I put in another one down here and another, another one down here. And this is done largely through copy and paste. So you'll notice that these all appear to be more or less exactly the same. Uh, I tweaked the belts and the positioning of everything a little bit, but basically they're all exactly the same. But I've also put in a, a barrel mine down here because there's this uh, this large barrel patch down, which is about what was it, uh, 11 million down here. So we've now we're now uh, gathering all gathering this up, filling up a station over here. I say filling it up; it's not really filling up quite as quickly as I would like. Maybe I should be putting some additional um, modules into these into these drills over here. But we are already a bit short of power, so maybe when I have a bit more power available, that'll run a bit faster. Or maybe I just need another one of these outposts. So this is running quite well. We are producing a significant quantity of, bar of barrel to turn into beryllium, um, and it, we'll we'll see later whether it's able to keep up. It is also producing quite a lot of pollution, though. I think it is gradually getting cleaned up. Um, however, I, it, it, the the air purifiers are struggling a bit over here, and I think I might need to boost this a bit because there are still a few biters in the area. In fact, if I turn on the um, the debug thing that shows pollution values, we can see there is a value of 70. The worst one here, around the edge, we've got... Yeah, the, these are basically clean. That one's at 20. It is going down. Ooh, down, sort, sort of. No, it's not going down. It's not really going up, but it's not going down either. So I might need to put some extra cleaning in here and here. And this one's possibly going up, actually. 
Okay, I, I think I think I need some more cleaning around around here because it's it, yeah, it, it's not quite keeping up with the amount of pollution that we're producing. Also, you'll notice there's a lot of pollution on all of the um, all, all the rails as well from the trains going around, which is a little bit annoying. We might just let that one drift out and let the bikes deal with that because. All of the outposts are defended. They've got some laser turrets. It's not an enormous amount, but it's potentially, hopefully, going to be enough to keep off any, and stave off the sort of little attacks that we're going to get from the pollution. Maybe I might put some more laser turrets and some more uh, pollution scrubbers in there before we, before I get, before I leave. I have also done quite a lot of clearing out of the biters, as you can see by all of these scorch marks over here. We've got a single nuclear. Uh, let's turn that one off and turn that one on. We've got a single nuclear artillery cannon slap bang in the middle of the base over here being fed but from a blue chest and we've got quite a lot of um quite a lot of nuclear artillery shells available uh and the fun thing is if, if i zoom if i zoom out you can just about make out this this is the automated uh, artillery range coming around here uh which isn't bad i mean it's bigger than this outpost so it's doing quite a lot of shooting and has been has been taking out lots of biters which is why we have so many laser turrets along the walls here to make sure the uh, the attacks don't penetrate um, but if I zoom further out and if I get out the uh, artillery targeting remote and zoom out again, then you can see that the the, art the range now is absolutely flipping enormous. It goes all the way out here. It covers almost all of the area we've explored. So it's absolutely trivial to go around and say, well, I don't want that bait nest to be there. I don't want that one to be there or that one or that one or that one. I can just blow them up from here. And what and a nuclear artillery shell is pretty basically is if we zoom in here again um, or here is essentially enough to wipe out all of the nests in, 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 in un, underneath it like that. Now, it doesn't do very much damage against biters, and it does... Oh, it hasn't quite got that nest. That's disappointing. And it does very little damage against worms unless you hit them dead on with it. Um, but it does... Basically, it destroys virtually all of the nests in a, in, in, in a base. And that's what we really want to do, to do, because it's the nests that produce additional biters, which can then produce additional nests, additional worms, and so on. So if you can get rid of all of the nests in an area, you're not going to get any more biters and it's generally going to calm the area down and mean you won't get any attacks from there now we are going to get a lot of attacks coming in from all of the nests i've just destroyed sure um but the uh the, the system can cope with those also i am on the planet at the moment so i can keep an eye on the on the um, on how things are going and make sure that there isn't any sort of anything too serious going on so Yes, we're going. To, we're now going to get lots and lots of biter attacks coming up here, like uh, like this. Who are going to throw themselves against the walls of my of my base up here? But we we can deal with that. That's basically okay. I'd rather have that than have bite than have them exploring out and coming in out and attacking the, these mines. So that's working quite well. I think I would like to clear out a little bit more area and get this 12 million barrel patch here and possibly this 5 million one over here and get another couple of these little mining outposts set up on them because they, they are really good. They, they will pr pull in all of the um, all, uh, enough barrel to then keep everything happy. And as we notice, this one down here is struggling a little bit. The amount in these in these uh, containers is then they're not basically they're not full. There's not a, there's not as, as much coming out of these mines as I would as I would like. So we want to speed them up a bit, but, uh, which I'll just by do by putting a bit more across there. Oh, we're getting some damage of. Oh, okay. The the downside. The downside of this is that occasionally the biters will come in and they will attack a train. So they've they, they've wrecked one of my trains here. Um, so I'm going to need to build some more trains as well. That was unfortunate. That was just unfortunate timing. The biters were coming up to attack the wall over here, but they found a train on the way over and decided to wreck that on the way past. So um, yes, I maybe when I'm going to start doing artillery stuff like that, I should turn all the trains off for a little while. <laughs> oh dear. Oh yeah. So there's a train. Yeah. Where's that going? I was going that way. Okay. Fair enough. Um, yes, the train. So the trains do unfortunately sometimes come a cropper from this system. Um, but that's a shame. But the walls are quite capable of keeping dealing with this because with the uh, with the mods we're playing, the spitters aren't capable of attacking over the top of these walls. They have to destroy the walls first before they can get to the laser turrets. The walls are pretty tough, so things are basically absolutely fine there. There's a couple more things I need to talk about over here. So I tried playing with the uh, with the bio gun, which is a weapon you, which fires out a big green sneeze of stuff. And let's 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 have a demonstration. Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I've flown into my own goo again. <laughs> oh, for goodness' sake! Oh, this bio gun. F in the chat. F in the chat. So, I have a bio gun, and when you fire that, it fires out this sort of big green sneeze like that. And then any biters that are caught up in it, 
um, will then get this sort of weird poison effect on them where they start to have these, these green flames. And this is actually relatively effective against biters and against nests, um, but not so effective against worms. And it also means that if you if you manage to kill a biter with it, then they explode with a big shower of purple goo um, that does loads and loads of damage to any biters around them. And is actually quite effective, especially if you can get it onto sort of a, a cluster of them like that, and a cluster of relatively weak ones. So the biogun is an, is, is an interesting weapon, um, and it's in theory is absolutely lethal about big against big clumps of biters. The problem is the um, the big green behemoth biters are quite. T oh, there you go. There's a purple goop explosion. The big big pink behemoth, uh, big green behemoth biters are excessively tough, and so the uh, the biogun is not so effective against them. The other problem with the biogun is it also damages players. So if you fly, if I fly over the green the green goo stuff on the floor, even if I just fly over it, I don't even need to um, touch it. Then it starts to affect me as well, and I fall out of the sky, and then I get absolutely wrecked by whatever's around. And yeah, it was this this went badly for me a couple of times. Uh, so I've managed to unfortunately had to have added a couple of kills to the uh, to the to the uh, to the count. Uh, so yes, the the moral of the story is be very very careful if you're using the bio gun. It's quite dangerous. <laughs> the other thing I need to tweak on on the um, in in my out here on Talos is all of these beryllium mine train stations. So at the moment this is set up to enable when there's more than six thousand in the station, which is absolutely fine. It works perfectly when you have one train coming out to get coming out to them. Uh, now, I might be able to fix it with a train limit, actually, or I might not. Yeah, I think I probably can fix it with a train limit, but I was thinking that um, I'm going to need to reprogram all of these to say, to um, have a, to, to put in a combinator over here to, to look and then, and then we can use, then we can start to use the train limit thing to enable, to, to enable or disable the station instead of using enable or disable. But actually, that's not necessary. If I just come in here and I set train limit to one on all of my mine stations, there's only about four of them, so that's actually going to be quite easy, then that should stop the, pro the problem that was going to occur. So what can happen if you don't, if you don't have that, so what can happen is if there's if there is six thousand in one station, but all the other ones are completely empty because you've you've pulled in all the, all of this the stuff from them, you can have the first train head out towards the, towards the station and go yes I'm going to go and get some I'm going to go and get some because it's activated because it's got more than six thousand, and then the second train goes oh yes I'm going to go and get some from there as well. The first train pulls into the station, it loads up with the the um, the core fragments from there, and then the station it doesn't have enough in it so it deactivates. The first train leaves full absolutely fine, but the second train will then sit around going oh I don't know what to do now. And it will just sit there, potentially blocking the rail rail lines. So you need to have it set up differently. However, if I come in here and if I, if I put that uh, train limit of one onto all of these, then I don't need to do anything cleverer than that. So that's going to be absolutely fine. That should sort that problem out and allow me to put more trains in and just have everything working a bit more a bit more effectively. I also need more power over here, as I was discussing earlier. So that's Talos. Now let's go off to Taras with an R, which is a planet, planet of an alarmingly similar name. And over here, Mark, Mark came out to this planet, and this is the, due to the Immersite shortages I was talking about before. So he set up a, a system over here. Um, he was going to use um, solar power, but then he discovered he's a long, long way from out from the sun. Um, he's all the way out here. I'm actually not that much closer in, so I'm slightly concerned about my plans to use solar power. But yes, he's, he is a little bit further out, further out. So he's got a solar effectiveness of 36% compared to my 49%, which still isn't great, but it's better than nothing. So yes, uh, he's he's been setting up a uh, shop on on Taras, um, uh, big big nuclear power station to generate power, and then um, he's got he's got these these core mining drills, and these are pulling up immersite core chunks. So exactly the same basic idea as all of the other ones. They, these are core chunks that have some immersite inside them. So you pulverize them, you get out your your immersite, you get 20 immersite out apparently, so it's slightly better than the beryllium ones. And you also get your core fragments and your stone, so these can then be processed as as you're used to, as you've seen a million times before on other planets. The core fragments are then, as, as usual, shipped down here to be processed into delivery cannon capsules. That's great. Uh, we'll make loads and loads of those. He seems to have two of these setups. That's interesting. He must be planning to do a lot of core process, core mining, and therefore need a lot of core processing. That's um, quite impressive. But then he's, he's dropping in lots and lots. He's also dropping in the supplies for here to make the uh, make extra delivery cannons um, from there as well. Okay. Uh, then up here, we then can ship out the uh, the uh, the immersite. Ore, which goes into the into the machine here, where we crush it into immersite powder, a crushed immersite, and, and sand. Filter out the sand, and then you, you've seen this before when I was doing it over on the other planet on uh, on Tishikuten, where we're then turning it into the air, the immersium sulfide, and then we can turn that into that. that then we get the immersium powder which can turn into immersium crystals and immersium plates, and those are then being shipped out to down this belt, off to off to a delivery cannon. 
fine so that's that's basically as, as more or less as you'd expect He's also got the extra delivery cannons in here to take out the uh, the excess of miscellanea that comes out from uh, that uh, that comes out from the core processing. So from here we can then start shipping all of these things out and send sending them off to uh, to back back out to Nor to Norvis to uh, Norbit and to anywhere else that's going to require the the immersium, uh, the immersium plates and 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 uh, crystals. Uh, we've got standard defensive things over here. We've got a nice big uh, mine that you can set up over here if you need it. Uh, if we need, if we do need a bit more emissite, but at the moment the core mining seems to be doing quite well for, for that. And then he's got all the supporting stuff around here as well. So we're making the nitric acid and the and the ammonium uh, and so on. And and then down here, the, fortunately, this planet does have. Uh, does have some mineral water uh, points on here, so we're extracting that. So we're not going to run out of mineral water, which is a relief because that was always the that was often the big problem on Taishakuta. Uh, he's got another. St he's got a st big steam battery over here that's good holding the power for the umbrella defense. So all of this is is, is pretty much the standard uh, setups you've seen before. Over here we've got the setup for the uh, defensive system for, against asteroids. So we've got a, a delivery cannon in the middle, uh, chest in the middle here that pulls in all of the ingredients that are required to make. Well, we make green circuits. We make cables. We can make water to make acid to make uh, batteries to make to make the. Um, the ammunition for defending against the meteor defense ammunition to feed out into this massive array of guns. How many of these are there? Uh, there is 48 of them, which is um, only slightly excessive. Um, yeah, so this will hopefully be enough to keep to keep us satisfied with all of the um, immersite we need. And if not, because there's so much of it available on this planet, it's going to be relatively easy to expand by just having another copy of this sort of system put, put somewhere over to the side of it. Now, the thing that's going to be a little bit interesting here is going to be the uh, the sulfur. So he's uh, the the Im Im Imersite processing produces phenomenal quantities of sulfur. Uh, there's going so you, you can see on these on these belts over here, we've got quite a lot of sulfur that's then getting filtered out here and then passed off down here. Now at the moment, there's not been so much of it. We've got it's coming around here, and we've got a little bit coming into making the acid. This is obviously a bootstrap with this um with this delivery cannon chest because there's going to be crazy amounts coming in eventually. But at the moment, he just wanted to get get the acid bootstrap to get the system started, and then the excess is being passed out round here and we've got yeah already we've got quite a lot of it so that's all going to need to be shipped off to somewhere else now we need huge quantities of um imosite for the vulcanite processing so potentially this could that with this could be shipped over to um uh, to to agnea where there which is where we're do, doing the doing all of the vulcanite processing at the moment and currently do we how, how are we doing sulfur over here we're making okay we're making sulfur here out from from oil so the the old-fashioned way if you will um but we can drop it in here so i think it'd probably be better to drop the sulfur in here have a have an un, have a loader pulling it out of that chest like um out of the delivery cannon chest like that and we'll filter filter it to just um just sulfur and then pump that in onto here with with as a priority so we can do that and get this yeah get the get the sulfur being brought in perhaps from um from from taras and uh and, and fed through here and because yes we get through a lot of sulfur processing the uh, processing all the vulcanite so i think that would be a yes a good way to a good way to get rid of it and uh, and, and in, in, in somewhere where it's definitely going to be needed and it'll save on the amount of oil we have to dig up on this planet because eventually it's okay at the moment but eventually this oil patch down here well okay there's there's like two million of it at the moment still but eventually that will potentially run out uh, so i'd like to make that last a little bit longer if i possibly can so yeah what else is, is there to say about this this the system here is, is running quite nicely it just needs the uh, the out outputs uh, connecting hooking up over here uh, that's obviously going to be the uh, the thing for next time um and if we do reckon we're a bit short of um of imosite then there, there's there's actually there's another three um core mining seems really quite close by uh, and then another several that are a little bit further away so we could potentially set up a train system or given this is mark and the way he tends to build things we could have very very long belts running around here to, to bring just to bring all of the uh, all, all, all of it in but i think what we need to do is we need to get this up and flowing find out how it's how it's doing compared to the amount we need um and then ha and, and just how 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 much and, and whether the how how well this system copes with a solid whatever belt this is uh Express a, a blue belt of the, uh, of the of the of input coming in here. Now he has set it up here so we can have more inputs and more outputs. So it's going to be just a bit a case of doing some copy pasting where where as and when we want more. But I, I think from from my impress, general impressions of what Immersite is like and how much how many different things it goes into. I think we're going to need a lot of Immersite out here. So I think it, it's good that this is all set up suit, suit, suitably expandably. Um, oh, and I note he's also yes he's also bringing the um, the the, the the uranium that's produced over here is being brought uh, brought over to, uh, to, to to help supply the uh, the nuclear facility down here, which makes a lot of sense. It's not going to be enough, but 
you know, you might as well top it up a little bit as, as and where you can. So I think that uh, covers pretty much everything we've been up to over uh, out here on on, uh, on the um, on, on the ex exoplanets. Oh, uh, actually, not not quite. Uh, Mark did a little bit of tweaking on Taishakuten because, as, as as you saw last time, we had I think we had an insufficiency of no, we had too. Did we have, I don't know. There was a problem with the sulphur. We probably had too much of it because that's usually what happens. Um, and the imasite wasn't flowing because of sand problems. So that's that's all now, now sorted. So we are we do have a bit of imasite being produced here. It's nothing like as effective as what uh, Mark has put together um, due to be, being another one of the um, the pre-module builds. So it's it's a bit slow. It's a bit, it's a bit less efficient. It's just generally not as good. But it means it's producing a and that's allowing um, Mike to be produce at least a trickle of his um, supplies of material science packs. Uh, but it's yeah, it, it's a little bit feeble, and and and, and uh, we'll, we'll, this this entire planet is going to be completely unnecessary because we're going to have Agnea doing the vulcanite production. We're going to have Taras doing the uh, imosite production, so this is just going to be a bit a bit unnecessary. But we'll we'll probably leave it here, just trickling through, producing that little bit of extra power as we need, uh, a little bit of extra supplies as we as we need it. So this brings us on to the topic of how how, um, how well we've been doing at surviving this this time. Um, unfortunately, I died a couple of times, as I mentioned earlier, due to basically due to incompetence with the bio gun. It's it's a dangerous weapon, and I wasn't using it very well, so that didn't go too well for me. Uh, nobody, everybody else managed to survive because they were all off on in safe places like um, orbit or um, on a planet that has no biters on it. So um, yeah, a couple of extra deaths for me, unfortunately, but that key, still keeps me in third place. I'm doing fairly well at staying alive, staying alive. Uh, it's just that uh, in the last episode, the rest, the rest of them all, all did a little bit better. <laughs> So that's the end of the episode. Please check out the channel sponsor, treefor.be. Use the code Lawrence Plays to get 20% off your uh, off server hosting services from them. Uh, come back on uh, Monday when we should be carrying on fixing all of the problems I've been talking about here. Come back on Wednesday when I should be playing XCOM and trying not to get uh, too many people killed by all of the uh, the alien hordes in that game. Um, and hopefully things will go a little bit better than they did with the biogun in today's episode. Uh, then Thursday, no, Friday, Friday, Saturday of next week, there'll be another pair of these episodes. And on Thursday, no, not Thursday, Tuesday, there should be a um, there should, should be a video coming out for supporters. Um, it's talking about what to take with you when you when you head off to space, the beginning of space exploration. Uh, so if you're not a supporter, make sure make this, now's your chance to uh, to join the channel. Uh, drop in a donation on Ko-Fi uh, or become a Twitch subscriber, and that'll that'll get you in there. And you can see the videos a week early and uh, and 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 and. and and have the satisfaction of supporting the channel as well. So, as ever, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the episode, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.